Well, first, I'm just really happy to see Smoke in the position that he's in. Um, he worked tirelessly um, to know about his, his story, you know, where he came from, the struggles he gone through, you know, his, losing his brother tragically. Um, you know, so many different ways things could have gone differently for him, but his mental fortitude, his passion and desire, his commitment to excellence has, has uh, seen him to this place. And I'm elated that he's, uh, you know, playing at the level he's playing at and playing on a wonderful football team in Buffalo. And, you know, that's indicative of who Smoke is as a man, first and foremost. There's a lot of guys that have come through here that I played with who, uh, you know, tried to help. And, you know, for some reason they, you know, didn't, didn't want to, you know, hear it or just had their own plan. But Smoke is one of those guys that, you know, always was asking me questions. And, you know, it makes it, um, I don't know, it makes it worthwhile to know that you can, you know, try to have a positive influence on guys and, and to see him doing some of the things that I try to do with my fellow, uh, my peers is uh, is great. And I, and I hope Gabe was able to listen to him because he has some, some really sound advice for him. Hey, Larry, your general manager kind of called out the team, at least his top paid players, star makers, whatever, and, and challenged them to play better. I, would you say that your top players have responded the last three weeks? Uh, I I don't I don't know I, I didn't know he, I didn't know he called anybody out either. Um, I I just know that we have a prideful group of men, and guys who really care um, not only about ball but about each other. Um, they're dedicated to the cause, and you know they they desperately don't want to let each other down. And I think when you have guys who are like that, selfless and hungry and passionate about the way they go out there and work and the way they play on Sundays. You know that will that will eventually resonate, and you're not going to win every single game of the National Football League. They're so tough to win, but if you have guys who are committed, you're going to win a good share of them, and you know that puts you in position you know, as we approach the tail end of the season. Larry, I know winning a Super Bowl is the top priority for you at this stage in your career. Back in 2018, when things weren't going too well, did you wonder if the team could get back into contention before you retired? Um, I would be lying to tell you if I didn't, that, that thought didn't cross my mind. And, um, you know, you know, when you're, when you're two and 16, you know, there's a lot of bad things that go through your mind. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's rough, you know, to be, be in that position, but I'm, I'm glad those days are behind us and, and we put together a really good football team. You know, uh, you know, a lot of it is people that we drafted and then a lot of it is guys that we brought in as free agents. And uh, I'm just happy to be on a team that's competitive in every single game that we play in. You know, we honestly have a legitimate chance to win. We have the personnel, we have the, the pedigree, we have the coaching, we have the play calling that can help us win. Do, do we win every single game? No, that's not, that's not the case. But, you know, to have the chance and the ability to win every single game is even a great place to be in the National Football League. Next up, please, Mike Jarecki, Catherine Fitzgerald, Mark McClune. Larry, just picking back off what you said about the team. Obviously, you guys don't have any bad apples in the locker room. It doesn't seem like we're not in there this year. But when it comes to chemistry and trust and unity, I mean, it seems like you guys are a close-knit group. How does that help you throughout the season to stay together? Yeah, I think that's a you, you got to tip your hat to Steve. You know, it's, it's very difficult to put together a football team. Um, and you have 53 different personalities, guys from all different places and walks of life, different motivations. And to be able to get everybody to get on the same accord, it's, it's very difficult. And, you know, you look at the best players on this team, um, you know, the Buda Bakers, the Patrick Petersons, the Chandler Joneses, the Jordan Hicks, and um, the Corey Peters on defense. And you look at, you know, some of our ace special teams players, and you look at our offensive guys, you know, the DJ Humphreys and the DeAndres and the and the Kylers and guys like that, I mean, they're all wired the same way. They want to win, but nobody's bigger than the team. We want to do it in the framework of, of, of you know, good teamwork and everybody, you know, has, a, has a, you know, uh, the interest of us being good and, and doing it the right way. And when you can comprise a team of that kind of character, it's very easy for guys to pull for each other and to be able to dig themselves out of, you know, adverse situations. Larry, what was it like meeting Marcus Golden for the first time, and what was it like when he got back to the team um, the other week? Well, I mean, me and Junk immediately, you know, hit it off as soon as he got here. I just love the way he he went about his business. He's constantly asking questions about ball, about you know things that he can learn about life, and 
you know, even when he left to go to New York, you know, we stayed in constant communication. I talked to him at least once a month all the time. And, you know, I was really sending him a lot of text messages last year when he had that 10 and a half sack season. I was really happy for him and was hoping he was going to get his big payday because he had earned it. Um, and now just to be able to have him back, him and Josh Morrow, you know, a former teammate, both those guys are, are wired the same. They are hardworking, dedicated players, and they do everything they can to, to make their team better. And both those guys are going to create, you know, some mismatches for other guys that have success, and they're, they're going to have success as well. And, um, you know, I I told Junk, I said, Junk, I, I think I think 10 sacks for you in these next nine games is realistic. You know, just the way he competes, the way he works, I think I think is out to form, and I, I would be. I, I, I think I might be the happiest guy on the team for him to see him do it. Hey, Larry. Good afternoon. Hey, uh, it was brought up to Kyler yesterday that that you guys have the number one ranked offense in the NFL right now. He said he didn't know. Um, not sure if you're aware, but what's that? What's that mean to you? Which your reaction to being on the number one offense right now in the NFL, and what, what do you think that means? Also, uh, just inside offensive meeting rooms. Well, that doesn't, that's not something that we ever discuss. We don't talk about that. You know, there's a, a lot of things that we can improve on and, and get better with. Those are the things that we address in, in the facility. That's our standard. You know, we, we go out, we set out, we work at it every day to be the number one ranked offense in the National Football League. But, um, you know, it, it takes guys to be able to execute at a high level. Coaches calling the right plays. It's a, it's a collaborative effort. And, um, you know, it's only week eight for us. We got to be able to finish the season as the one ranked offense. And I'm not talking about, you know, in January, I'm talking about in February. We will wrap it up with the final two, Darren and Catherine. Larry, just a quick follow up what I'd asked earlier with, with the, the rookie Gabe Davis. Uh, and I hope you take this the right way. He said when he was a young boy, he was watching you and uh, when he was really young and you were his inspiration to eventually want to become an NFL player and an NFL receiver. Does that mean something to you when you hear something like that, that you were an inspiration for a guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it does. It, it does. It, it, it resonates with me because I was in his position when I was, you know, a ball boy for the Minnesota Vikings to get a chance to watch Randy Moss and Chris Carter and Jake Reed and Chris Walsh and Matthew Hatchett and all the players that I really idolized and looked up to. Um, and I had a unique experience to be able to sit there and watch those guys up close and personal and, and be able to learn from them. and. You know, so I, to get a chance to be able to tell those guys that and be able to watch them up close, you know, it gave me motivation and it, it makes me feel good that, you know, I could do something like that. And I look forward to meeting him, you know, next week when we play against him to shake his hand and congratulate him on all his success. Larry, Cliff has mentioned how he tried to change so much of the bye week this year just to get you guys in a good frame of mind for the game coming out of it. And how do you think that went and how much of it kind of happened naturally with COVID where like y'all had to be around anyway and how much was like a different schedule on his end? Um, I, I, I think I want to answer that. I like the fact that none, none of us could leave or go anywhere. I mean, I, I've never been around in a bye week. You know, I've always been somewhere else. But, you know, I came and worked out Thursday, came and worked out Friday, came and worked out Saturday. I would be working out anywhere I was at on vacation for that for that time. But to see the amount of guys that were here, I mean, we were running routes, you know, on Thursday, Friday and Saturday out there. And I saw DJ with the whole offensive line, Pew and Mason and, and Beach. They were all out there working on different drops. I saw the tight ends doing their thing. I saw the defensive ends working on their pass rushing drills. I saw the defensive backs catching balls off the jugs machine. I, it was a lot of activity. Quarterbacks were out throwing to us. I mean, I've never seen I mean, you would have thought it was a regular practice day, the way guys were going about their business and professionalism. I think a lot of that has to do with where we are as a team at five and two. I think guys understand that we have a really good ball club and we want to keep that positive momentum, you know, winning three games. We love to take it to four. Miami Dolphins have won three, three games in a row. I mean, so to be able to keep that, um, you know, positive momentum, we have to put the work in. And, um, you know, Mark Dalton told me a surprising stat, you know, what, what were you telling me that? What was the record of teams coming off the off of the bye against teams that had? Oh, uh, this, the, the short week one, eight in a row, eight and a half. The teams coming off a of, off of, off a of bye have actually lost eight games in a row. So um, a lot of people think that you're uh, you're getting rest to get healthy, but you know when you're playing good, you want to continue to play well. Sometimes the break is not a good thing, and I think guys understood that based off of last year, and we want to correct it.